Okay, everybody. So we are going to be studying how to find the surface area and volume of both pyramids and cones. And uh, before I deal with um, that idea of finding the pyramid, uh, I really feel like it's kind of important to take a little quick look at how you find the area of a polygon, because it's been a little bit since we did that. And so I wanted to do a brief review uh, of that concept. So here we go. So let's suppose that we have a regular nonagon that is right here. So I just picked a, a nine-sided polygon. And so the first thing that we did, if you recall back in the day, is we said, well, any kind of polygon is going to have 360 degrees wrapping around the center of it right here. So if we <laughs> were to take that 360 and we could divide it by nine and get 40 degrees, or we could also divide instead of by nine by 18 and get 20 degrees. It depends on what your choice is. Some people like one, some people like the other. I personally like to do the second because if I drop this altitude right here, which um, that means I'm coming in perfectly perpendicular to that side because if I can do that, if I can then execute the area of this polygon right here, this little triangle, all I would need to do then is multiply by the 18 that we said right here, because I'd have 18 such triangles that could then generate um, my full polygon. So keep in mind, we had six right here. I just figured out that this top angle right here is 20 degrees. Um, Depending on what you like to do, I sometimes like to use that bottom angle. It just depends on what you have. So what I notice is that if I took, let's say, the uh, cosine of 20 degrees, that would be the adjacent right here divided by the hypotenuse. And that may seem like a little bit of a bummer to use that letter H for uh, height when uh, that also is part of trig with the hypotenuse. But you know, Sokotoa. But anyway, the cosine would be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So all I really need to do is take the cosine of 20 and multiply by six, and I'd have the height right here of my little triangle, which, uh, which is a good thing to call it, or some people will call that the apothem. So if you um, are having trouble understanding uh, and you look up another video or you look it up in, in like an article on Go on Google or something like that, a lot of times it will be called an apothem. Now, we could either use the Pythagorean theorem to finish this guy out, or we could uh, go ahead and use trig again, which I think is what I'd prefer to do. So I'm going to take the sine of 20, and that would give me uh, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Again, I'm just referring to Sokotoa a little bit, and I'm not using um, the tangent because I wanted to use that hypotenuse. So this is a pretty easy thing to do. So the sine of 20, again, is 0.34. And then if I cross multiply, I get uh, 2.05. So that would be the base. And so, of course, all I need to do is find the area of the triangle, which is 1 half the base times the height, and uh, so that would give me, let's see, 2.05 times 5.64 uh, divided by 2. It looks like that little triangle there is about 5.79. Uh, let's see, I guess I'll just say units squared, but then, of course, to get the area of the entire nonagon, I would need to multiply that number by 18 because I had 18 little triangles making the whole thing. So the area of the polygon is 104.166 units, again, squared. Okay, so that's just a quick reminder of how we did polygons back in the day. And it sort of depends on which side I give you as to what trig ratio you'd want to use. But that's going to become very important because eventually that is going to become the base of a larger shape. And we need to know how to do this in order to deal with the bigger picture. So anyway, I will see you back in class soon. Bye-bye.